Viewers, the opposition in the alliance never tires of telling us all that it is supremely committed to secularism. If it is telling us the truth, why then is the Congress-led alliance using more than six crores of sacred funds donated by Hindu devotees to build a mall inside the Arunachaleshwara temple premises? It's a question that we must ponder and we must ask ourselves. How can a state government run by major members of the Indi Alliance be in the business of religion? If they all swear by the principle of separation of religion and state viewers, that's the defining principle of secularism. One wonders if Indi Alliance parties would support, for instance, and I'll be very blunt here, the decision to use devotee funds to build a mall inside the premises of India's leading mosques or on church grounds. Will it, for example, go to some of the leading mosques and churches and ask the laity and the other members of the convocation to give the donated money to them so that they can build a mall on the premises of these religious places of worship because I don't think they will. The decision to build the mall inside this holy ground of the temple on the extreme left and you can see it's all being dug up. The temple is, the facade of the temple you can see overlooks this ground and a big building is going to come up. Now the decision to build the mall is being severely criticized as an act of desecration of holy temple land and an act of religious discrimination against Hindus. The mall, when it is completed, will also obscure the darshan of the Raja Gopuram. And you can see very clearly, viewers, that's where all the excavators are. And if a building comes up, then you can imagine that this Gopuram, which is seen from about 20 kilometers, will be obscured and some people who don't go to the temple every day face this Raja Gopuram and offer their prayers from even their homes. The mall is a blight, make no mistake, upon the dignity and religious heritage of Hindus. And I'm not saying it, even the UNESCO is saying so, viewers. Let me walk you through some of the facts that we know as of now. 6.4 crore construction fund is to be drawn from temple resources. Now, what are these temple resources? They're from the Hundi viewers. From the Hundi, and they are comprising of the donations that devotees give for the upkeep of their temple. Devotees raise concerns now over the implications on heritage of the temple, if it's going to be pululated by commercial activity, etc. UNESCO's concerns over structural violations before the Madras High Court. The HR and CE department is accused of misusing funds meant for Hindu temples and their upkeep on all sorts of other ancillary activities. But viewers, this act of desecration as it is being called is made possible because of one of the most anti-Hindu laws on the books in our country, in our states. The HR and CE Act usurps the rights of Hindus and exemplifies contempt towards Hindu devotees. It is still on the books, even though it traces its origins to British times, when the state under the British wanted to maximize opportunities to loot Indians. In fact, the Act allows modern-day state governments through temple management boards to use donations by Hindu devotees for public works. The state only milks Hindus and this act doesn't apply to Christian or Muslim places of worship. I'm not being divisive here, viewers. I'm only stating facts. And let's go into some of the hard facts. Are Hindus discriminated by design? That's the fundamental question we are asking. Are Hindus second class? Let's look at the hard facts. In 1926, the Madras Hindu Religious Endowments Act of 1926 allows the then government to appoint a board to run affairs of temples. 
This is an absolute fact, viewers. You can check it. In 1959, some 30 years on, the Tamil Nadu government under the Congress revived several provisions of the Act that were once read down by the Supreme Court on pretext of better management and regulation. As if viewers, Hindus can't manage their own affairs or cannot be trusted simply because perhaps they are not as trustworthy in the eyes of the state to manage their own affairs. That is a strange proposition, isn't it, viewers? Post-1959, in 16,000 of the 44,121 temples, no pujas are recorded in them as the management board alienates the devotees. In 1960, all but four Indian states adopt laws allowing the state to govern Hindu temples. Can you believe it? This becomes a national fetish in all states except for four. Post-1960, one lakh acres of temple land are under control of the state via HRNCE Act all across the nation. Post-1960, the state can decide to divert temple funds for the upkeep of other poor religious institutions. Yes, viewers. So, devotee money, donations from Hindus can then be used by the state for the upkeep of mosques and place of worship of other denominations, viewers. That would sound a bit unfair because the reverse doesn't happen. In 1987, Andhra Pradesh government appoints executive officers to organize prayers and oversee customs, religious customs. And there are several of them. And in my book, viewers, which has just hit the stands, I actually elaborate on this point. Then viewers, it is discriminatory because, for example, the Wakaf Act of 1995, it doesn't have such draconian powers that are applied to the state. In fact, this act places considerable powers in a board that is not entirely state controlled. The fact that this discrimination against Hindus is happening in broad daylight is a matter of grave concern. Unfortunately, the courts too have dismissed viewers petitions challenging the constitutional validity of the HR and CE Act. This despite the fact viewers that the Supreme Court talks about the necessity to uphold secularism in this country. The irony is lost on the Supreme Court viewers. What is the state doing managing the affairs of a particular religion? That would appear as a travesty. The brazen undermining of the principles of secularism to discriminate against Hindus raises at least five questions which I'm going to pose. And I'll tell you viewers, those who are supporting this will not have the answers. They will obfuscate, they will attack me. They will question everything except for answering the question. But nonetheless, I will still pose them and the questions are there in front of you. Isn't the Tamil Nadu government's decision contemptuous of Hindu sentiments? And the decision I'm talking about, viewers, is to use donations by Hindus to build a mall on temple grounds. The Supreme Court held Mandir funds can only be used for purpose of public good. I want to ask what public good is being served by constructing a mall? There is a very specific in law definition of public good, viewers. And I read up about it. The construction of a mall doesn't serve public good. The third question, are Hindus less trustworthy than adherents of other faiths? That they have to have a board, you see, managing their places because you can't trust Hindus. Wow. How selectively and arrogantly dismissive viewers the state is of Hindu interests. And I'm not just talking about the state of Tamil Nadu here. Question 4. How can the DMK government claim it is secular when it is managing religious institutions that too of one particular denomination? Last but not least, why are Hindu donations being used in Tamil Nadu to help maintain places of worship of other denominations?